Good afternoon. I'm Jim Hannafin, and I'm former Aztec. Aztec, St. Louis football cardinal, San Diego Charger, and so on. I am also probably the only four-doored warrior in the house. I go back that far with Don Coriel. Fifty-four years ago, I met this crazy young man. Of course, I was a crazy young man myself. But he became the head coach of the Fort Ord Warriors. He was 32 years old. Yes, he had coached uh, at various places, a couple of high schools in Hawaii, the University of British Columbia, Wenatchee Junior College. And he came down the coast. He wanted to get out of the state of Washington because it rained too damn much. And uh, he got around and he applied for the head coaching position at Fort Ord. We wound up having a heck of a football team. We go 9-0 and that particular year. We win the national championship of service football. Now, there was about seven or eight of us that had already played one year of pro football, and there was many more that after we get out of the service, it's going to go back to the NFL or the CFL, Canadian football. And here was this young man, it was amazing to me, that this guy was able to coordinate, to bring all of us together, and to actually become a team. We were making $75 a month as privates in a service. We were all ticked off, all right? We were all going, hey, wait a minute, you know? Uh, shoot, what are we going to do? And yet here was this young man, Don Coriel, that got us going, made us proud to be what we were being and what, what kind of a team we became. And I'll never forget the, the spirit, the passion he had for the game. And, of course, he kept that all along, all the way. Now, I'll say this. At one point, we were rolling really good. I mean, we were really a good football team. And so we were having no problem knocking the heck out of these other teams. And all of a sudden, we got, we didn't know this one side of Don Coriel. All he was to us was just a little bit nuts, a little bit, you know, a little uh, strange, you know, and he had some weird ideas about the game of football, which he proved out he was right. But we hadn't seen any of this before. And now, on one occasion, we wind up 7-7 tied ball game. And we saw the other, the other side, this unbelievable competitive spirit. And when Joe talked about the oranges, I think the first time that that orange thing came along was at Fort Ord, because there was a box of oranges in there. And we were tied 7-7. Seven seven. I'm outside with the other starting tight end. There was two tight ends back then. And I'm having, a, we're talking to this pro scout about when we got out of the service, signing this contract with this fellow. And the guy was smoking a cigarette, and he offered the other fellow and I a smoke. He said, you guys want to smoke? You went, yeah, sure. So we're standing there in our uniform. We're having a cigarette, and Don is in, get, addressing the football team at halftime. And the ladies' restroom is right next door. Now, I'm going to say this. Yeah, I know you're going to deny it. I know you are, because he always would say, it didn't happen. It did not happen. And... Believe me, it did happen. That's why I'm telling it today. It'll be my last time, Don, so I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> but here he is going stark raving mad in there, and now he sees two starting tight ends are not in there. He says, where is A.D. and where's Jim? I think they're outside, Coach. He walked outside. I'll never forget. You know how he was with that, that, that beetle brow and that fierce eyes and whole thing, and he's in a crouch as he walked outside and he sees I'm having a cigarette and I look over and I'm oh my god he goes you get your sorry rear ends get back in and out back and it was a little bit stronger than that I'm cleaning it up and we go back inside we sit down and we got a small dressing room there at Fort Ord and we're all sitting there and he starts in and he kicks the oranges he kicks them all over heck and gone he is gone ballistic I mean we're seeing every vein the, the the cords in his neck, the whole nine yards. And I mean, and he's being rather, rather profane, okay, to say the least. But he's getting our attention. And yet we're thinking, hey, the guy might have a stroke, man. We might see this guy uh, 
this could be death right in front of us. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, some of the women had, the ladies had reported this abusive language being a, a administered to these wonderful young men. And now the general gets in on the act, and an individual all of a sudden, knock that off in there. Knock off that profanity. And Don, gosh dang it, he turns and he crouches and he turns. Who said that? And about that time, this guy's six five or six six, shoulders like this, ribbons all over his chest, and he walks in through the swinging doors. He goes, "I said it." And with Don, Don turns. He goes, "Oh, I'm sorry." <laughs> I'll tell you, we went to the floor. That was the end of the halftime speech. We go on the field, the other team is feeling really good about themselves, they're tied with us at halftime, and we come roaring out of there laughing and slapping each other, and going, oh, did you see that? Is that a classic? And all this, and of course we go out there and just roll up and down the field on them. And of course now, like I said, he always, God bless you, coach, it, I'm saying it now, it was true. You did do that. The other factor, and I started thinking about this a moment ago when Joe was up here, because Joe and I were with him for many, many years, as so was so many of the other fellows out here in the audience. But the guy would go crazy about the weather. The weather. It was, it was real hot. He'd go, don't tell the guys anything about the heat, man. Don't tell them about it. <laughs> if it was ice cold out there, we're in Green Bay or wherever, he'd go, Tell me, hey, it's don't say a word. And you know who would be the first guy to say, hey, fellas, it's really hot out there today. And, oh, it's really freezing out there. I just was out there. It's frostbitten. I mean, be careful now. And you're going, well, you just told us not to say anything. And there you go. But he'd, I mean, we'd go through all kinds of altitude. We spent a whole week in Laramie, Wyoming one time getting ready, Billy for the Denver Bronco game because the altitude. Don goes, it's a mile high city. We gotta go, we'll go to 7,000 feet in practice. That way we'll be better than the Broncos. They're down at 5,000 feet elevation. Hey, go figure. But he was always trying to come up with an angle, all right? An angle. And like Joe said, the hatred, the hatred. Oh my gosh, on the opponent. And the bad thing about that one was that a lot of the guys as years went by and particularly in the National Football League, you get to know these guys. I mean, like, you either played against them, you coached with them, you coached against them, you played, played for or with them, whatever. And so you see Joe or, or Frank or whoever it might be, and you go, hey, how's it going? You know, good to see you. You know, how's the wife? How's the kids? And all that. Hey, you better not say that around Don. Because, hey, they were the enemy. And he would build that, and you know, it, it, we all remember, the worst time was see him on Friday, Friday, Friday morning. He'd come walking in, and he'd have his game face on, and God bless him. Hey, you think, hey, this guy's going to go out, he's going to run every ball, he's going to catch every pass, he's going to throw every ball, he's going to make every interception, he's going to make every tackle, he's going to do the whole nine yards. This is him. And now the next thing, he'd relax finally on Saturday night. And his addressing to the football team, I wish it would be an absolutely wonderful thing if you could have taped all the Saturday night speeches of Don Coriel. Let me tell you right now, it was better, as the players would say, this is back when Saturday night, Saturday night Life was great. You know, with Belushi and all those guys. They go, hey, they have nothing on us. We got, it's unbelievable. We don't know what he's going to do and what he's going to say, but it's going to be good. It's going to really be good. And it was good. Believe me now. Hilarious. I mean, you go, I don't know how he did it. But the thing, the bottom line was always this, how competitive he was. We all knew and we know what a, a gentleman he, he was and is and what a wonderful family man, what a great friend. But he also brought what I'm bringing to you now. So much fun. It was so enjoyable to play or to coach for this gentleman. It was, it was, it was special. It was really, truly a family. 
And if there's one thing that I'd like to leave with all of you, coaches particularly, players particularly, you are his legacy. You are it. Too often, a great artist, a great leader is forgotten. Now, I don't believe Don Coriel else will ever be forgotten, not in San Diego, certainly not in St. Louis. But I darn well want to see everything else about him be carried on. And it's up to each and every one of us to do that. And you young men out there that are playing ball right now, that are going on and eventually uh, many of you may well go into coaching, that as time goes on and you see, gee whiz, you know that skinny post, where did they come up with that idea, skinny post? What was that bang eight? Well, you can just kind of check it out, man. Check it out. And you can go right over here to Danny Fouts and Charlie Joyner, et cetera, et cetera. And back back in, in St. Louis, Jimmy Hart, Mel Gray, et cetera, et cetera. Jackie Smith, the great Hall of Fame tight end. Kellen Winslow, the great tight end here with the Chargers. Or actually, the H-back. And one night, I still remember Joe, Ernie, Zampisi, myself, Don Coriel. We've got, we're going to have this running back by McKin, uh, uh, committee, Clarence Williams, and uh, Mike Thomas, Lydell Mitchell. And all of a sudden, Don says, well, you know, what we're going to do, he, says, he looked at me, he says, now, he says, what do you think about Kellen, Kellen tight end and all this? And I said, oh, you can play tight end. I said, but, you know, we've got a really good tight end, blocking tight end, Bob Klein. I said, Bobby really knocked the guy off the ball and all this and that. He got, he said, well, Don goes, well, why don't we move, let's move Kellen, and we'll move him to fullback. I'm like, fullback, Kellen, Kellen's going to hate us when he hears this one, man. He may hang it up. And I said, Kellen, because Kellen, I keep on talking to Kellen, he's 250 pounds at the time. I said, hey, a few more pounds, I got you, that left tackle, man. Now, so he was scared to death, he's already eaten now. But Don goes, no, I said, fullback. He goes, no, no, it won't make the term H, H-back. And I said, so, he's going to be the H? He goes, yeah, we're going to move him all over Heck and Gun. We're going to move him all over, and he's really going to be over here. He's going to be in the slot over here. He's going to be at a flanker. Oh, he's going to be all over the place. And we're going to throw the football to him. Hey, what happened? Huh? And Mr. Winslow is the Hall of Fame football player today. <laughs> to tell you how, how simple Don made things, San Diego State, day before uh, uh, training camp, I say to him, I said, Coach, I said, we don't, you know, I look around and I said, I don't see, there's no page here or anything like that about the huddle. And he goes, huh? I said, the huddle. How are we going to get the guys in the huddle? You know, who's going to be X and Z and Y? And where are they all going to line up? He goes, oh, gee whiz. He says, they'll, they'll, just, they'll get there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So that next day, I, think, I started thinking about this when McPherson was up here addressing you all earlier about the sheep, because that's what I'm thinking. Oh, this ought to be a classic. We're going to get some blind sheep out there. And we're going to go, okay, let's all huddle up. And they're all going to go, well, where did we go? You know what happened that next day? He said, okay, huddle up. They all huddled up. <laughs> I went, well, he proved a point to me. Next thing he did, that same year, he asked the quarterback coach, Rod Dowhar, he goes, Rod, who's the best? Billy Knockers, Jesse Frakes. He goes, well, coach, he says, you know, I've been evaluating them. I've been doing this and I've been doing that. They're dead even. He goes, oh, okay. Then we'll play them both. I was sitting there, I'm going, this could be interesting here now. This is going to be uh, something unusual in the game of football. We're going to have both quarterbacks in there. And 
will really bedazzle them, you know, with this. He goes, oh, no, he says, don't be silly, Jimmy. He says, what we'll do, flip a coin, and Billy will start. If Billy wins it, he starts the game that day, and then we flip the coin the next week, and if Jesse, wins, Jesse starts. And then we alternate them every down. What, you know what happened on that one? We go undefeated. No, we go 10 and 1, excuse me. We go 10 and 1. We lead the nation in total offense. I think Billy had 30 more total yards than Jesse, total. That kind of tells you something else about Don Coryell. He just was unbelievable about being able to figure things out and make it simple and go with it. But again, I want to remind you all, think about it, gentlemen, those of you that are going to be playing the game and coaching the game, where it all came from, and honor the man. I honor him. I loved him. Always will. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.